Hi everybody, welcome to our Instagram Live. Today we are going to be talking about native plants that the native people here in Southern California used for their everyday life. They couldn't go to Target, they couldn't go to Walmart, so they had to use the natural resources that were around them in order to build their houses and get medicine, things like that. So the native people who lived here, there were two groups who specifically lived near this Newport Beach area. The first is the Gabrielino Tongva, and the next are the Ahashiman people. So um, we've learned from those different people some different uses of plants. So let's go on a little walk around the nature center and see if we can find some of those plants. Ready? So the first plant growing in our desert habitat right now is this prickly pear cactus um, and the prickly pear can be eaten so the prickly pear fruits the purple fruit is really really delicious it can be made into jams um, and syrups the pad itself is really really good it tastes like an apple so um, there's actually a Mexican dish called nopales that you can eat the pad the tuna is that prickly pear and you could use it for all sorts of things. So it, it's really, really good to eat, but then it also can be used to cure bruises. So if you were injured or bruising in any sort of way, you can actually put the flesh of this cactus on your bruise and it helps to heal it a little bit. So we have a couple of plants growing in this area right on top of each other. The plant that I want to focus on is the sycamore. So this is a sycamore leaf and how large it is, it's bigger than my hand. These sycamore leaves were used to wrap food, so as leftovers, so um, a zero waste sandwich wrap. <laughs> out of these leaves. So the sycamore was used for that. And the wood itself from the sycamore tree um, could be used to carve bowls and um, to build houses. So the sycamore tree was really, really important. One thing cool about sycamore trees too is that it is a riparian species, which means that it grows near rivers and streams. And so if you can identify a tree that is a riparian species, you can know that there is definitely water nearby. So it's a signal, a beacon of fresh water as well. So that sycamore tree is very, very useful. This plant right here is called bulrush. Um, the native people called it tule, and this tule was used to make their homes. So their homes were called keys or quiches, and this tule grass they would use to construct a huge house. Now these houses were often large enough to fit about 70 people inside. So if you can imagine a structure so large, if it's that many people, your whole family could live inside of that house, which is really, really amazing.
this plant right here is called buckwheat and buckwheat grows all over Southern California. I see it almost everywhere. Um, and the seeds could actually be ground into um, a flatbread, almost like a tortilla or a pita bread. Um, so this buckwheat makes a really, really uh, good um, bread right now in uh, the grocery stores and things you can actually find buckwheat flour it's an alternative to regular flour so if you need a flour substitute buckwheat flour um, is native and it is a, definitely a great alternative this plant is called California sagebrush and it has a really really strong smell so if you see a plant like this you can go ahead and give the leaves a little rub and then smell your fingers um, it's a really really strong I like the smell of it a lot but insects don't like the smell of it so if you were to um, take this leaf and rub it on your skin those oils keep the insects away um, so that's how they would use that and this also um, when cowboys were riding around in Southern California, they didn't have deodorant, so they got kind of smelly. And they would also rub the leaves of this plant on their skin to help uh, improve their BO. So this plant, California sagebrush, is also known as cowboy cologne. This plant right here um, is called lemonade berry and these are the little berries and on the outside of it if you can see is kind of sticky and syrupy and that sticky syrup is really really sour it tastes like a warhead or a, a lemon head if you were to take this and mix it with water it makes a lemonade flavored drink so the native people um, when they are in need of something a little bit more exciting than water would um, make lemonade out of these berries. As we're walking along the trail here um, at the ENC, we do allow a little bit of poison oak to grow so that you as a person visiting our nature center can see up close and personal what it looks like and be more mindful when you are hiking around in Southern California. So this is poison oak. You can see how it's growing one, two, three, and you're probably familiar with the phrase leaves of three, let it be. So um, if it's growing like that, you should be mindful that it's probably poison oak if we're on this side of the um, Mississippi River. If we're on the other side of the Mississippi River on the East Coast, then it's poison ivy. So those oils get on your skin um, and they're really, really irritating. Different people are more or less allergic to it. Just depends on you as a person, but you don't want to find out how allergic you are on purpose. Heather, we have a question. The question is, did Native Americans have poison oak? Yes, so poison oak was growing here. It is a native plant to the west coast of the United States, so that is something they had to battle. And I believe you can make a tea out of the poison oak um, that doesn't give you issues. Um, but yeah, poison oak was growing here at that time. This is a fern and 
ferns can be boiled down to make a kind of stew, um, sort of like steamed spinach. So that's really good uh, to eat this fern. Um, here at the ENC, we have redwoods growing. Uh, Southern California is not native redwood habitat. It doesn't rain enough for them, um, but we uh, do have them growing here. So if you want to come see a little baby redwood, this is the place to come see it here in Orange County. Now, there was no redwoods who, that grew naturally here for the Gabrielino Tongva Ahashiman people but the redwoods that grow naturally up in northern california and grow along the coast could fall over um, into the ocean and then drift their way down here to southern california so they were able to utilize the redwood to make canoes different kinds of boats um, out of the driftwood of the redwoods that have fallen into the sea from northern california This tree is a coast live oak and Southern California is rich with different kinds of oak trees. And this tree was really a foundation for the Gabrielino Tongva and the Ahashiman people. Um, this was their life basically. The acorns that grow from an oak tree can be made into an oatmeal, um, kind of uh, similar to oatmeal. Um, it was called We Wish, and the acorns have a poison, a tannic acid inside of them that is harmful to you as a human. It would hurt your stomach, um, but you would leach the poison out of it, mush the acorns together, and then you have a nice We Wish oatmeal um, that you can eat and you can add different flavors to. So that jelly that we talked about from the prickly pear can be added on top. Um, some sea salt, different things to make a really, really wonderful dish. And they ate a lot of We Wish. Um, oak trees, the leaves are robust. Um, they're sharp on the edges, but they really hold their shape. So um, you could take a whole bunch of dry leaves from the ground and put an animal fur on top and now you have a bed. Um, and the wood is very, very strong. It could be used to make your house or anything, uh, bowls, things like that out of wood. The oak is a great wood to build things out of. Um, and then you can also make jewelry out of the acorns. These oak trees could be used in a number of ways. Oak trees were so important to the people that every family had a specific tree. So my last name is Davidson. For example, this tree might be for the Davidson family and nobody else could eat from that tree. And then um, my friend Raquel behind the camera, her last name is Friedman. Um, the Friedman family would have their oak tree and the Davidsons could not take anything from the Friedman oak trees. That's how important they were. So these oak trees um, are really, really important to the native people. This plant is called redbud, and here at the ENC, we actually have two different California Native American programs that we teach on a regular basis. Um, and this plant is my favorite to show the kids because it helps to cure diarrhea. If your stomach wasn't feeling so well, um, this plant can be brewed into a tea and it can help calm everything down. So it was the Pepto-Bismol of the Gabrielino Tongva Ahashiman world.
If you are interested in our field trips, we've actually moved to start doing a virtual field trip. So um, there's more information on our website about those trips where we are able to take the kids out and teach them in the center despite having to stay at home, which is really, really fantastic. So check that out on our website. This next plant is called bay laurel. And if you are thinking of those dried bay leaves that you use at home in your pantry to flavor soups and stews and spaghetti sauce, this is that exact tree. So these um, bay leaves can be used to flavor things and they have a really strong, almost like black licorice smell to me. Um, and the smell can help to clear your sinuses so just like a Vicks vapor rub if you're sick can be put on your chest the oils from this bay leaf can help to clear a head congestion I want to talk about some more sages which are further up the path so enjoy the nature um, that is around us as we are walking to so find those different sage plants. is called black sage and the black sage could be brewed into a tea to help cure a sore throat um, and it's even so powerful if you were to be hiking around in the mountains and you saw a black sage um, plant and your throat was a little bit sore you can just chew on the leaf and it does help to calm everything down so and um, this is a fantastic plant the people would also um, use this plant to cure a headache so you can boil it with sea water and it does help to calm down a headache This is white sage and white sage was um, also used to hide a human smell. So it's a really powerful smell. Ooh, I just rubbed it once and like it's so strong. Um, it smells really, really nice. So if you were to be hunting and you don't want wild animals to smell you coming, um, these leaves could help to conceal your odor as a human. Um, the Chumash people in Santa Barbara area 
um, revered this white sage. They, um, it was really a cure-all for almost everything and they would drink water infused with the white sage every single day to help kind of align everything and make sure that everything um, in your body is running smoothly. So it's very similar to a green tea um, that we use um, every day to help just keep everything nice and strong. Um, and it could also help to lessen, um, what, what's that word? <laughs> yeah, it can help to lessen menopause, um, in women. So this white sage was really, uh, really great. I could keep talking about the different native plants all day long, but uh, we'll end it here for now. If you come down to the ENC, we have tons of native plants growing all over the place, and these plants are used for a plethora of different reasons. Um, the Gabrielino Tongva and the Ahashiman people definitely utilized these plants here in Southern California. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to submit them. We'll answer them um, and then keep a lookout at our calendar. Next week, we are doing a tour and a history of the ENC, and we're also giving you the scoop on poop. So tune in to our Instagram lives and check out our spring fair that's coming up pretty soon. We're really, really excited about it. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye.